I'm Mae McDonough, this is the Psychedelic Cherry, and today we're learning about the components inside of your guitar pedal. Welcome back to the Psychedelic Cherry, or if it's your first time, hey, how are you? I'm Mae McDonough. Um, today I wanted to talk about the components inside of your guitar pedal, what they do um, and what they are. Now I know technically I have made this video before. If you've been following me since my first video, which you have not because I had zero subscribers back then, um, you would know that I I've done this video. Um, but since then, some of my lovely, very highly educated uh, subscribers have pointed out to me that I misspoke a few times, and since I do want this to be accurate and educational, I'm redoing that video. Um, so let's talk about the components inside of your guitar pedal. All right, so let's talk resistors. The resistor looks like this and the resistor has a very simple purpose and that is to resist the current flowing through the circuit. Um, a basic law of a functioning circuit is that the amount of current that comes in has to be used up by the end of the circuit. Um, so we put resistors in here and there to help control the amount of current flowing from place to place. Resistors values are measured in ohms um, and they usually come with a nifty color band system in order to determine their value. Now why don't they just print the value of the resistor numerically onto the resistor? <sighs> because life is cruel and meaningless and someone who invented them thought that colorblind people had no business working in the electronics industry. Um, that or it's incredibly difficult to print on such a tiny, tiny space. These aren't even the smallest resistors that exist by far um, and it's even more difficult to read that small. So the color band was a nice compromise. It's still incredibly annoying, uh, but it works. So for that matter, let's move on to capacitors. So the capacitor looks like this. I hope you can see that. Um, and the capacitor is a device that stores electric charge. Usually the capacitor consists of two conductors that are separated by an insulator. Now, unlike the resistor, uh, the capacitor doesn't dissipate energy. It uh, actually stores energy inside of an electromagnetic field, which is pretty cool in my mind. Um, and this can be incredibly useful. Um, it can help in blocking direct current um, while simultaneously letting alternating current through, which is an incredibly useful tool in helping manage power supplies. So um, capacitor values are measured in farads, usually microfarads. Now, the microfarad is symbolized by an, uh, a lowercase u and an uppercase f for farad. Um, and uh, sometimes the value is printed directly onto the capacitor, and other times the capacitor just has a numeric code printed on it, which you can then reference the numeric code chart to determine what the value um, in microfarads is. There are two types of capacitors. There are those that are designated with polarity and those that are not. Um, the aluminum electrolytic capacitor uh, possesses polarity. 
So this means that it really has to go into the circuit facing one particular direction. If it goes in backwards, it doesn't work. Now, in this case, the negative lead or the cathode, which is the longer lead, um, is identifiable because it's usually a little longer. <laughs> Um, the positive lead, or the anode, is usually identifiable because it's shorter. So when you're using a capacitor, be sure to know whether or not it has polarity. And if it has polarity, you want to make sure to know which side is your cathode and which side is your anode. Some of them also have this nifty little negative symbol right there uh, to help you out. Let's move on to diodes. Diodes. So the diode looks like this. The diode is a semiconductor device that only allows current to flow in one direction. Um, obviously, you can see the uses of that. And uh, diodes have polarity, just like a capacitor. So. When you look at a diode, you're also going to notice that there is a way to determine which side is negative and which side is positive. If it's this kind of diode, it'll probably have a little marking that uh, signifies the negative side. And if it's this type of diode, it'll have a cathode and an anode, the cathode being the longer leg. So be sure to mind your polarity when working with diodes. Now, the diode you're most familiar with, and I'm most familiar with, is the light emitting diode, the LED, right? Um, now, you, this is what an LED looks like, and you're definitely gonna want at least one of these babes on your guitar pedal, if not many. Um, the first, though, the most important, is just to let the user know that when the light is on, the effect is active. No brainer, right? Right. So let's talk transistors. The transistor looks a little bit like this. And the transistor can be one of two things. It's certainly a semiconductor device, um, but it has one of two functions. Um, it can be an amplifier or it can be a switch. So when the transistor acts as an amplifier. Um, it's going to take a tiny little little uh, current into it, and then it's going to emit a much larger current. When it functions as a switch, it takes in a small amount of current flow into one part of it and creates a larger flow through another part of it acting as a switch. So, <clears throat> the transistor can essentially enable or disable the flow of electricity through the circuit, um, which is an incredibly versatile tool in working with the circuit. Um, in a guitar pedal, you're almost always going to be dealing with PNP or NPN transistors. Now, those labelings have something to do with the doping of the uh, anode, or I'm sorry, the doping of the semiconductors, and it's all very complex and not really something you probably need to know right now. Um, but that said, uh, make sure you double check whether you need an NPN or a PNP transistor before you throw one of these babies in. Let's talk IC chips. Uh, the integrated circuit chip looks like this. And uh, the integrated circuit chip, or sometimes known as the microchip, is actually thousands, hundreds to thousands upon thousands of little tiny circuits uh, on some semiconductor material. Uh, and then usually put into some casing like this. Uh, now, these guys can be amplifiers, oscillators, anything, you name it, because these are electronic circuits. Um, 
The invention of these little guys has massively affected the world of electronics because it enables us to do so much more simply based on the fact of how tiny they are, teeny tiny. Um, now, the IC chip typically has anywhere from four leads to 16, and sometimes they have 20 something or more. Um, but each of these little guys is a lead and uh, the way they are labeled is they number one starts where it usually sits underneath a tiny little black dot printed on the casing and you start there and you call that lead one and you move down and then back up and around so in this case we would have 16 prongs one through eight and then nine through 16. Now you don't want to solder an IC chip directly into your circuit board, okay? Um, you're also going to need something called a socket. Now, sockets can look a little bit different uh, depending on where you get them, but this is a, an IC chip socket, okay? It has the same number of leads as the chip that I'm using, and this socket can be soldered into the circuit board. Then you simply take the IC chip and clip it right into the socket, making sure that the polarity is correct. You wanna do that because if you solder it directly in, these things are very fragile and they honestly cost a little more than the other components. So, you know, you don't wanna damage them. Therefore, we use these sockets. All right, so those are your onboard components, all of the components that exist on the circuit board. But what about the other components, the components we refer to as offboard components? Um, if you open up the back of your guitar pedal, there's a lot more to it than just the circuit board, right? So let's get into it. So let's begin with input and output jacks. Now input and output jacks, are gonna look something like this. And they do exactly what they sound like they're gonna do. This is where you plug in to your guitar pedal to send the signal either in or out. Um, they come in two forms, mono or stereo. Now the mono is pretty simple. The mono will look like this. It'll have one single flange and two lugs. There is the ground lug and the tip lug. The stereo jack is a little more complicated simply because it has two flanges and three lugs. The ground lug, the tip lug, which connects to the longer flange, and the ring lug, which connects to the shorter flange. So please get familiar with recognizing what the tip, what the ring is, what the ground is. You're going to need to know that. And that's the basics of the input and output jack. Potentiometers, also lovingly referred to as POTS, um, look like this. Now, potentiometer is a variable resistor with an adjustable terminal, meaning this little guy um, that you can adjust manually. In short, these are your volume and your tone controls, etc. Um, you throw some really beautiful, fancy, brightly colored knobs on these babes and you have a beautiful guitar pedal. Potentiometers typically have three lugs and they come in two types, the linear taper or the log. Now your volume potentiometer is almost always, actually always, going to be linear taper. I've never had an alternative experience. Um, and, but your tone knobs, etc., can sometimes be either or. So be sure when you're buying your potentiometers that you know the value in ohms, remember it's a resistor, and whether or not you need a taper linear um, potentiometer or a log potentiometer. All right, so that's potentiometers.
let's move on to switches. Your basic, most common switch when building a guitar pedal is this little baby, the foot switch. Now, the foot switch is exactly what it sounds like. This thing is going to go through your guitar pedal, and it's where your foot is going to slam down on it to trigger the effect active or inactive. Now, not all switches are foot switches. Some are toggle switches. Uh, there's all sorts of switches. There are on-off-on switches in order to toggle between two different states or bypass one state. Um, and then there are obviously these very simple on-off uh, switches. I think that's pretty much all you need to know about switches. So let's talk about other really basic components that you probably will need to understand, but are pretty simple. All right, so last but not least, you're gonna need stranded wire. Get it in a bunch of colors. It's just conductive wire wrapped in non-conductive -conduct material. Um, and the more colors you have, the easier it is to organize yourself. But that's how you wire everything up. Um, and you're likely going to need a battery snap to plug the battery power source into your circuit. Uh, you can include a power adapter jack if you like, if you want to be able to plug the guitar pedal into the wall. Uh, I highly recommend that. You might even fancy an LED socket to hold your LED in place. They make some really nice ones and they make some really cheap ones. Uh, so you can go either direction. Uh, and of course, you're going to need some really cool knobs. Uh, that's really mostly for aesthetic purposes, but I highly recommend them. And you're going to need some sort of drilled enclosure, but you can use just about anything. I've seen some highly creative enclosures, and um, I'd really like to get more into enclosures, but honestly, it takes so much time. So <laughs> uh, that's what you're going to need. Those are your basic components and how they work. Um, so learn these components. If you learn these components, you'll be able to do more than just build guitar pedals. I recently uh, repaired uh, my touring friend's bass for him just because it happened to stop working on the night they were in town and playing with us, and I was able to use my skills to fix his bass for him so he could go finish his tour. These are great skills to have, and I highly recommend that you take the time to learn them. So get yourself educated and get building. That's it. I'm Mae McDonough. This has been The Psychedelic Cherry. Please comment and subscribe and tell your friends. All right, goodbye.